What's up everybody, Extra Million here once again with Totally Sick Final Fantasy VII Edition. And uh, this one's this one's going to be a tough one. Uh, in this uh, episode you have to escape from Midgar Tower after you get captured. And you're going to have to fight four bosses in a row with very little time to heal in between. And in a very annoying minigame. Uh, so you get captured. But then, while you were captured, uh, Sephiroth apparently showed up and just fucked everybody up, and then just left. Uh, it should go without saying, but every single time you gain control of your characters, you will usually get all of your health back and be revived. Uh, always remember to save whenever you can, because these fights are incredibly uh, luck-reliant and very annoying. Uh, so, once everyone has all of their limit breaks, set the battle speed all the way down for this one. This is two boss fights in a row. Uh, as you can see, you are fighting on this uh, these floating platforms. This is 100 Gunner. He has uh, 1600 HP. And... Uh, because the platforms are not connected in any way, the only character who will be able to damage him directly will be Barret. Barret is also the survivor for this fight. Uh, Red 13 and Aerith cannot actually hit him with physical attacks. If, the, if you were fighting this battle normally, you would have to use magic or items. Uh, so basically, just make sure Barret uh, attacks on his every turn. And then just wait until either Aerith or Barret are at about half of their health before you use Aerith's uh, uh, Healing Wind limit break. Healing Wind always heals you for about half of your current uh, uh, maximum health. If one of your characters is getting close to getting their limit break and you know that the damage will push them over, just defend so that they don't end up taking too much damage. Uh, once he falls below 1,000 HP, he will switch from his uh, Auxiliary Artillery attack that he's using right now and switch to one called Main Artillery, which will target every character. So we'll use Healing Wind now, since our characters are fairly damaged. You'll need at least two Healing Winds, if not three, to survive this attack. Uh, this fight is actually not the tricky one, but since you have to fight another boss right after this one, um, it's all about having enough health after the end of this one to survive the next one. The, le the next boss has less health, but more damaging attacks. And then once uh, he falls below uh, 500 HP, uh, you'll get that message that says Sensor Charging. Now he will take two turns to charge the sensor, and then he will use an attack called Wave Artillery, which hits uh, your entire party for uh, a bunch of damage. Or it can miss. It seems to be one or the other. Basically just continue to attack him until he dies. Uh, the next boss, who will appear as soon as this one dies, 
Uh, his name is Heligunner. He kind of looks like if you attached helicopter blades to a car engine. Uh, he has three separate attacks that are all very annoying uh, at the start of the fight. He will usually always start off with a uh, firing line, which uh, can do sleep and poison to you in addition to the normal damage that it does. Uh, then he has another one called AB Cannon, which only inflicts sleep, or C Cannon, which only does poison. Obviously, you don't want Barret to get poisoned or fall asleep. If he does fall asleep, it's wise to wake him up with uh, a physical attack from Red 13 or Aerith, as opposed to waiting for him to just be attacked again. You also don't want him to poison Aerith and then barely ever attack her, because damage from poison does not fill your limit gauge. So here he is. Now he only has a thousand HP, but he can consistently do way more damage than a uh, hundred gunner. He also has about a 20% chance to evade your attacks, so he has a way higher evade than the previous boss. And if too many of your attacks miss, then that'll just be too many wasted turns and you won't win anyway. So here's the second healing wind. This will enable me to most likely survive this fight. Obviously, Barrett needs to attack with every turn that he has, and then everyone else can just either defend or put themselves in the front row so that they're uh, higher targets. Red 13 is a good choice because he has the highest uh, HP. Now, I get fairly lucky in this fight because a few of Barrett's attacks miss, but uh, Red 13 gets his limit break Sled Fang one more time, and it goes critical and does almost 400 damage, so that cuts off a nice chunk of his health. As you can see right now, I'm in kind of a bad spot because the one character I don't want to have low health, Barret, has very low health. As you can see, uh, merely surviving this fight is difficult enough, let alone trying to get the exact sequence of events that you need so that uh, Barrett is the only one left alive. Once he falls below uh, 250 HP, around there, uh, he will start using two really powerful attacks called Spinning Body Blow and Spinning Drill. These do a ridiculous amount of damage. So, once it gets down to here, you'll have to just kill him as soon as possible. Now, at the end of this fight, I get incredibly lucky. Um, both Aerith and Barret could be killed in one hit, so I basically had to hope that he would kill uh, Aerith first. And that I had to hope that my next physical attack would not miss. It's also kind of a crapshoot because even if I don't miss, uh, he has a damage buff in his uh, below 250 HP form. 
so that attack could uh, have still not even killed him. Uh, once you finish that fight, uh, you'll want to set the battle speed all the way up for Cloud's fight with Rufus. And then as soon as the battle starts, use uh, Meteor Rain as soon as possible. Uh, Rufus has 500 HP, and he fights with his uh, pet jaguar named Dark Nation. Dark Nation will always start the fight by casting Barrier on Rufus. And 99% of the time, you won't be able to act fast enough to stop it. Uh, now, as you can see, almost uh, like five of the six uh, meteors from Meteor Rain hit Dark Nation. Ideally, you would want it spread out evenly, so three for each. But uh, either way, Dark Nation's dead, and he won't be able to recast uh, Barrier or M Barrier on Rufus. So uh, Rufus's protection will turn off pretty soon. Rufus can kill you uh, fairly easily, but. Uh, more often than not, his AI roulette will end up making him waste a turn by just laughing. So it's it's pretty difficult to lose this fight as Cloud. As you can see, Barrier is now worn off, and I'm doing uh, full damage to him. And then that's it for that fight, and he just leaves. After this, all of your characters will regroup in the main lobby, so obviously save. Now all of your health is restored, but in the next section you have to play a mini game where uh, Barret, Aerith, Red Thirteen, and Tifa all get into a big truck and Cloud is following them on a motorcycle and a bunch of dudes come up behind you and you have to swipe at them with your sword and keep them away from the truck. Now the truck has four sides, the front, two sides, and the back, uh, with a designated character for each uh, side. Now Cloud and all of the characters have a life bar and if the guys that you're fighting hit either Cloud or one of the sides it'll damage that specific character. Now whatever characters that you want to use in the fight against the next boss you basically have to make sure that they don't take uh, enough damage during the minigame because that damage will equate to health lost. So unless you're extremely good at this minigame, you usually won't start the fight against the very next boss with uh, full health. Uh, you'll want to have Cloud, Barret, and Aerith, and then equip Sense on Barret, and put every character into the front row. Now, the main trick that I'm using for this fight is that there are uh, three types of these motorcycle guys. There's the orange ones, which are super aggressive. There's the red ones that hang back and mostly do nothing. And then there's the blue ones, which are kind of in between. Um, the red ones will never usually attack you if you stay near the truck and then swipe your sword. So once you get two or three red ones, you're pretty much home free and you can just keep swiping. Uh, this fight is unique in that it starts off as a back attack and the rows are reversed, so since everyone was in the front row, they are now all in the back row, so they took, uh, they took less damage from his attack. Obviously that's something that you wouldn't know unless you had already played this fight beforehand. This is Motorball. He has 2600 HP, so he's obviously the toughest boss we fought uh, thus far. He will always start off in the same exact sequence of attacks. He will use uh, that back attack, then he will use arm attack, maybe even several times in a row, usually on the character with the highest HP, which is most likely Cloud. Then he will uh, transform into his compact form, and his next move will be Twin Burner, which does uh, about 80 or 90 damage of unavoidable fire damage. Then he will drive into you, or do some other attack. And then he will follow that up with a move called Rolling Fire, which does about 200 HP, which obviously you won't be able to survive a second one. Now, he always does the same sequence of events, so you need to kill him, obviously, before he cycles through again and does a second Rolling Fire. Now, as soon as he does Rolling Fire, obviously every single one of your characters will get their limit breaks. Use Healing Wind, uh, Big Shot, and Meteor Rain in that order. 
then sense him so you can see what his health is, so you can start gauging how fast to take your characters down. Uh, so once he uses Rolling Fire, his thing just starts over. Uh, once you get his HP down below uh, 380, I believe, um, he will go into his compact form and use uh, Twin Burner again, no matter what he was doing. If he is already in his compact form, he will waste a turn going into his... Uh, turned up form, and then he'll go back into his compact one, so that'll save you a lot of time. And after he does that, he will skip his next three turns, and then we'll use rolling fire afterwards. Obviously, this means you must kill him and all of your characters and have Barrett be the only survivor within those three turns. So he's about to do twin burner again. So luckily I did enough damage to him there to take him below 375 HP. So he goes into his form, wastes a turn, then goes into his other form. Now this is the Twin Burner I was talking about. He does this, then he will sit idle for the next three turns. So you need to kill Cloud and Aerith and have Barret use the finishing blow before he does his next move, which will be Rolling Fire, which would obviously kill all of your characters. You'll see me pause a few times, I just wanted to do that so that I... Uh, could have an extra half second or so to think about my moves, since obviously this is life or death. So Aerith kills herself. I use big blow from or body shot from uh, big shot from sorry, from Barrett kills him. And thank Christ, you'll never have to do that shit again. So uh, after this, you'll get out to the main world map, and you'll get away from Midgar. And your mission now is to hunt down Sephiroth. Once you do make it to the main map, obviously, save, so you never have to deal with any of that bullshit again. So now a whole lot more of the game is open to us, and I will see you guys next time.